Remember, if you start your video with one minute of silence, no one could break the one minute no swearing rule. Exactly. So? And this, and this is where we're better than Come. other people. We did it in the last um, 20 seconds. Barbara Streisand? Well, that's definitely got his demonetized for sure. Anyway. <laughs> This I started, lo I started roll, ro lo loading up the right roll 20 and then close the tab out of sheer force of power. Thanks, Jack. Um, this is where I put my monetization if I had any. You don't, you'll never get monetized. I won't, because, you know, the art of doing D&D shows on YouTube is pretty much dead at the moment unless your name's Critical Role. Even or they don't get 20. as many... Yeah, that's like this they... is the thing they, they don't get that many. They get much more traction on Twitch than they do yeah. on YouTube. But you can't really drop into Twitch in the yeah. middle of a campaign. What's going on? I can't even get that one. Yeah, it's like I mean. <laughs> oh yes, okay. we started to stream it on Twitch. This is episode uh, hundred and twelve. Now what you do <clears throat> is you act. Like we're starting a campaign um, as a continuation of an old campaign that was run a while ago. And then we started on Twitch. Well, you know, there it is. I saw the advert again. Uh, the Lunar Cinema at Chester's a, a in August. I, guess I hate and love you so much, Dion. Mm -hmm. I hate and love you so much right now. Why? Because you started talking about how much you fucking hated clowns, and then I was like, what about jesters? And now I'm drawing an undead jester. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't, the thing is, I don't hate clowns in general. It's just I hate the, them in the uh, spell jammer. I know, but she still, hate... it prompted me to start drawing a jester. <laughs> she doesn't hate clowns with a C, she hates clowns with a K. Sure. Yeah, uh, look, look I, 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 I'm, I'm fine to do whatever it is that we go next. Um, however, seeing as we have been building up this clown stuff, I do admit, I, I, if I was to vote, I would vote to continue with the clown stuff. Plus, I really enjoy fighting them for some reason. Um, but, uh, yeah, that uh, Chester Zoo thing. Deal. Guess what film they advertised for it on the mm. uh, picture? What? Greatest showman. Yeah. Come on, what the hell? I did tell to you. To be fair, more, that would be fairly epic if we went and got went to watch Greatest Showman at Chester Zoo. Yeah, you just go around those at Chester Zoo, just around there, and then it's like, oh yeah, it's getting night time. Just sitting like an open air cinema, just watch that. Uh... Then, then you look around the crowd and be like, okay, how many people were here that were supposed to be here to do this, but have sneaked out just to look at the animals at night time? Because you know some people will probably try and hide in that bat house. Anyway, greetings everyone and welcome back to the Dark... Dark Tides of Terra. Hello! Yes. We are your... Um... Yeah. I can't even blame that on me almost saying Devil Darlings. Quite literally, I would try to say Dark Tides of Terra, but I'm just like, welcome back to the... Th <laughs> Welcome back to the, welcome back to the dark 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 <laughs> brain just sitting on replay. Somebody stop her! It's the illusion spell going wrong. <laughs> I can officially say that without worrying about. Spoilers, literally, only that. think of the movie when that happened. Yeah, I can officially say that without no. spoiling warnings. Now it's out now for everyone to watch. Kind of. I think we're actually getting it over on streaming in next month. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm having reflux. I still haven't got apparently. Jesus. Do you know what I'm blaming this on? I'm blaming this on the friggin' fruit salad drink I had yesterday. That, that was, it was fine for the first couple of sips and then I actually felt genuinely sick. I won't recommend it. Uh, so, last time. Yeah. You all 
found out the fate of Waffleberg, Kuiper, and the Poison Lady. Mm-hmm. You all had your moments of grieving. You all had some moments as well of trying to figure out your next steps in this world. After all, the big threat is gone, but there are still deals that need to be upheld and finished. And uh, so some fates that need to be sorted. And you decided it would be better to close out this one current chapter by heading back to the Freljord. But along the way, while well, trying to get to the Freljord, <laughs> you did run into one slight issue. So we got a spike dog invading my bedroom. That too. <laughs> I was talking more about the... Uh... <laughs> I can almost feel it. Oh, yeah, I did do that in 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 Lee. Um, oh no, I already knew we did that. I was talking more about the powder cake that you've got just on a ship of quite literally a lot of people. Were it's like, yeah, we fought together to stop this world-ending situation. What happens now? Do we just try and play friendly here, or do we go much. back to how things were? I mean, don't oh, forget, you've quite literally still got a Mundo on your ship. We do. That in itself is a worry. But yes, we did close it out last week with... Last week? We know what you mean, go on. Yeah, last session. <laughs> last session with Delrus coming across Umper being in the same room as Nefiri's pack. Just kind of... Look, is looking at this siege and is like, um, just kind of creeps forward, grabs Umpa, and kind of looks at the dogs. Is like, um, look, uh, I'm not sure who you are. You're dogs with blades on you, but uh, this is this is my room. And uh, there's there's other rooms on the ship if you want those, but th- this is my room. And please, please do not play with sharp objects around the baby. Okay, first things first. Uh, are you going to be? How are you going to try and get some put off dog? Um. Well, I'd probably just kind of walk over and try to just pick her up. Okay. Well, that I mean, was the wrong decision. <laughs> I'm a monk. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty dexterous. They are going to roll to see if they can smell fear on you. It's not so much fear, but concern. Great concern. <laughs> yeah, they don't get a massive amount of fear, but they do get a kind of worry. I, like a bit of a smell of... As you said, concern. It fears us. And while the main one remains in place, a couple of the others will start to move to your sides. Just kind of look. Hey, bad dog, sit! And the main one will open its mouth and just utter out. And who are you to tell us to sit? The person whose room you're in. It may and have the your end. scent, but it does and not the... have your name written anywhere. Hey. And the end of that kid that's sitting on your back. Or head. Not sure, you're covered in blades. Funny if we see the family resemblance. Plus. Get gets on. <laughs> As you said, my scent is all over this room. That should be enough for you, right? This is my space. My territory. Scent can be overtaken. You are a guest on this ship. So, I don't care what you are. 
As long as you're traveling with us, you do what we ask, okay? If you don't like it, go back to the desert. This one thinks us obedient. This one doesn't realize that we are not here to be ordered around like some loyal hound. We then are here go to get back safe. home. We are here to be satiated. Look, if you don't like the rules on this ship, you can go back home. That's the rule. That's the that's the deal here. All right. And who are you to give such authority and command? A more senior member of this crew than you. We are not a member of the crew at all. We no, you're a stowaway. But we have seniority in years, in wars, in I don't in care hunts. about age. I'm going to make a perception because this is... <laughs> I care I that in. this is our ship, our home. Make a perception. That you are staying, that you are stowing away on. I will as soon as it was. Um, yeah, <laughs> can help. And you can either follow the rules of our pack, or you can leave. Do you understand? Make me an intimidation check. Mm, it's charisma. I hate that it's charisma. Uh, Are you arguing down there? I'm not... There's some strange blade dogs stowed away on the ship. Uh, Alright. That's a deception. That was not deception. That's Fuck, it's the same modifier. <laughs> <laughs> I could be that it's... asshole and ask for a reroll, but... <laughs> it's the same modifier. <laughs> They're going to look to you. Humans are always so... Angry when it comes to protecting the little ones of their pack. I did not. Despite Alexander, we'll enter the room. It's like... Oh, and here is the father, I presume. What? What? <laughs> Alexander has not been privy to this conversation. What have you gotten in these dogs' heads? Nothing. Look. I know she looks younger than me, but bloody hell. <laughs> of course. We are protective over the child. So are your kind. Well, dogs, anyway. I don't know what your kind of dog does. But... I am going to ask you... protective over our young. If you wish, Dion. Hmm? To make me a Arcana check. I will, but Delrus doesn't particularly care what these things are at this point. And at that point, with, with that for you also have no idea. You think that these are just an odd species of dog. So do I. I don't care what you are. I don't care what you are or who you are. Kind of picks up the child. And is like... If we meant the child harm, you would be coming into a room You're of blood covered. and fair. You're covered in blades. That's not safe for kids. We're not covered in blades. We are blades. That's all the more problem that it's dangerous for children to play with blades. Delos, just just take them out, all right? No, because they're also in my bedroom. I'll deal with it. Calmly. You will come back to a bedroom. That is fine. If we are not wanted here, we can always find another room to stay in. Good. Go find another room. Very well. <clears throat> we hear that the captain's quarters are now vacant. Oh, for the love of God. Right, right. I'll do it with no, you all no, here. It, listen, it, it, listen. It's fine. It's fine. I am... I, I do not what understand. I do not understand what you are. I do not care what you are. Here's what you need to know. My name... 
Alexander fucking Romero. I have just saved this world twice, and I am not here to tolerate your bullshit while I'm trying to get back to a wife of mine that has been frozen for many years. I do not want to fight you. Not because I do not think I can win, but because everybody on this ship, everybody is tired. We have fought what can only be described as demons from another dimension. We are done. We are not here to toy with your strange interest in these power games that you seem to be trying to play. Just get out. If you're looking for a fight, you're going to find one sooner rather than later, but you do not want to pick it with this very tired, frustrated crew. Especially not by threatening the youngest members on board. And yes, I do consider you informing us that you could have torn her apart as a threat. Now get out. Let me persuasion check with advantage with that. Can I make it intimidation? Fair. They'll just look to you. We were just leaving Genoway. The only reason we haven't hunted you all is because you are tired. There is no game in this. I'm not here to play our... Oh, we're so much stronger than your games. I'll fucking throw you over, boy. Just get this out of the room. This is not about strength. This is about survival. Oh, this is about survival. Oh, we're, so, we're struggling so hard on the big half fucking wooden ship. Oh, such a dangerous hunting ground. Get the fuck out. <laughs> And they will indeed pass you by as they head towards the captain's quarters, aka Waffleboat's old room. I'm just kind of watching to wait for the shotgun to go off. You wait for the cannon to go off. And you do hear a splat. Just kind of look at Alexander, it's like, those things are going to become a problem. Uh, I don't want to deal with them. I we have either. fought long and hard. Why can the world just not throw us problems for ten minutes? That's coming from me. I know. Once we're rested, we'll probably have to deal with them, but... I have an idea. No. I don't know how... I. I do not know how much they are aware of the ship's coming and goings, but I have an idea. Can we just throw them at Lysandra's castle and be done with it? We'll right, you know what? I have an idea. I'm going to go and talk to them again. Right? <laughs> I'm going to convince them to come and fight me. I'm going to convince them to come and fight me in the cargo hold. Once I have got them down there, open the cargo hold. I will stand where I will not go flying. They will likely stand where they will. They will leave. <laughs> Forcefully. Fair enough. Right. Do I know how to open the cargo hold, fair firstly? Uh, have you ever been taught how to? I will get the two. Okay. To show me how to open the cargo hold, because he knows. Alexander will stomp up deck. I'm, I'm sure. I, I think we've got quite a few like people still just knocking about the ship. Like we have the troll, and we've got like we've... a lot of people on the ship. We've got the entire <laughs> fucking Winter's Claw army on this ship. Right. So they've already seen these dogs stomp past. They will now see Alexander stomp past. I will Alexander will have no inclination that these dogs are not friends on the ship. So as you as you head on up to the deck of the ship you will see what caused that splatting sound as you see what seems to be a purple smear on the deck essentially put. 
Yeah. But the Ooh. door to uh, his, the door to Wolfenberg's chambers is indeed closed. Look to whoever is near us. Who's near us? On the deck. Yeah. Uh, who would be on the deck? Probably Mariah. Look to Mariah and go. What is that? Eggplant. Um, right. Did the dogs enter? What? The Waffleberg's old t room. We have dogs on the board. You are not paying attention. Right, try the next person. She's the only that's one that's on deck at the moment. Everyone else is getting rest. Technically, Pitu would have been on board as well, but Pitu got taken down below deck to help teach. Uh, Alexander will stomp over to the uh, the captain's quarters, slam open the door, stand back and let the shotgun do its thing, cannon, whatever. Yep, you see the cannonball go fly past. How many shots does he have in that? Whatever. Look inside. Are they there? They are indeed there, making themselves at home. Right! It would appear that you want a fight very, very badly. If you want a fight so very, very badly, then we go to where we fight. Very there is well, a cargo room below deck. That is where we shall fight. We do not want to fight, we want to hunt and feed. You would not be suitable or be enough meat for all of us. Then get your fight on, because I will fucking hunt you if you don't. That will be your lack of survival if you do not come with me. You would challenge a Darken. What the fuck is a Darken? Last I checked, it was like a sword we picked up. Ah, whatever. I suppose you fit the bill of weapon. Both in intelligence and in what you are. They just all look to you. But it's the kind of look where even though it's many eyes, it's one conscious. The fact of the matter know. is, is that we do not want you on this ship. And I have been designated the one to get rid of you. The fact of the matter is... Thank you. We're more <sighs> valuable to you here than not. We have overheard your plans and what you wish to do in these frozen norths. We can keep the lower peons busy while you deal with the upper what are you on about she she this lissandra i believe you keep saying surely she has oh, an for army the oh for the love of god i've already got an escort into the building i have this under control i do not require pissing her off before i even get there Oh, we can if you want to go down there and hunt a bunch of trolls, I'm sure that someone else on board would like to have a very strong word with you. Not the trolls, but from what we've heard, she has more than just those. We will be more use for you ah. here than plummeting through the sky as you drop the hatch on us. As we have so... Overhead. All right, all right, whatever. You're perceptive. I suppose I should have seen that coming, dog. <laughs> Very well. You may call us if you really do not intend to make yourself a problem, that is fine. But there are many people on board who will not want you in the captain's quarters. I was once again asked that you relocate yourself. But they are not being used at the moment. They are not being used, but many people on the ship grieve for the man who once held these quarters, and they are not comfortable with you taking them, I imagine. It is not suitable for me to allow you to remain there. This one. Were they the vulture? Yes, they were the vulture dog. A 
upon saying that, you will see them all actually get up and move out of the cabin without even complaining or any more arguments of they should remain there. They all instinctively well, just get up. And while it is cabin. obvious to me, it may not necessarily be obvious to Alex will insight there. My rolls in this game are just incredible. This is the one game I haven't gone skill monkey, but I might as well have. Um, Purely from the fact of you know that Waffleberg was a Mackay, and that he was indeed he pretty much served in the uh, wars BRB. back when yes. Shurima was at its height. Darkin were pretty much ascended before they fell as well. You think that she may have fought alongside Waffleberg at some point? All right. Therefore, there's okay. probably still that little bit of respect there. All right, I respect that. Listen. We will head to the we will head to the cargo hold. If your friend tries to drop us, we will hunt her to the won't. ends of the earth. I'm sure she would take that as some sort of gleeful task. So please do not say that. I do not want her to think that this can become some sort of extra fight for us. We will not open the cargo bay. All you are really looking for here is travel to the Freljord. You have to understand that we opened a door and you are a threatening creature with threatening implications. Let us just put this all behind us. We do not want to fight you. It sounds like you have much more interest in fighting something else anyway. Let us leave it there. Very well. And they will exit the cabin and head back down towards the cargo hold. Delris, you've been waiting in the cargo hold. You've been waiting for the signal. You've been waiting for the opportunity. Uh, I thought the cargo hold was open from the, uh, cause uh, that's where Waffleberg cracked it open when I was fighting with the, uh, the Dark Knight. Yeah, it's down below deck. Oh, I thought it was where, I thought it was in Waffleberg's quarters cause he literally oh, no, opened it from there. Quarters. He has oh, okay. a button where he can press it to open it up, but uh, there are many different buttons around the ship that pretty much do the same thing. I'll, I'll go with them then. Yep. Just like... Delris! Delris is not here in, in person. Yeah, I was, I, as soon as I started saying that stuff, I'm like, wait, did she go BRB? <laughs> I'm back. Sorry no, about that. So, uh, Delris. Yeah. As you're waiting, oh. you've been shown a uh, little button just off to the side of the cargo hold that will open up the cargo hold. Yeah. Oh, Consider it. Even though Waffleberg's main use for doing this was in his <coughs> there are several fail safes around the ship. Yeah. This is being labeled fail safe number four. <laughs> and Sorry, you do need to okay. you've seen the theory approaching and heading to the cargo hold. It's kind of waiting. Are you trying Alexander. to make yourself in? Uh I'll stealth, yeah. Okay. Make me a stealth check, they'll make a perception. They don't ah. see you. Alexander will walk in with them. Yep, and you see Alexander walking in shortly afterwards? Delris! If you're in here, we have... We're going to leave them alone. We just want travel to the Freljord so they can fight Lysandra. That is what all of their gesticulating and macho is about. They overheard us anyway. They know exactly what our plan was. Probably should have seen that one coming. Wasn't exactly gonna... subtle about it. You gotta step out a second go. So you want to unleash that pack upon the Feliord? Not particularly. But they already know what we're going to do. There's no point. Yeah, but no how point. can we know they won't become a problem for our people afterwards? Do we really want to fight them on a cramped ship? It looks like exactly their kind of fighting ground anyway, Delris. Mm. 
Unfortunately, let's just agree to uh, act neutral for now, yes? Fine, but if they become a, a blight on the Feliord, that's your problem. Let us be honest, Delris. Many of our people would relish in the uh, in the opportunity to fight a creature so powerful with such a beautiful pelt of sorts. About half of our people, there's then the other half. We don't talk about the other half. <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably should, considering one of the god of the other half is the one that's giving Alari her magic currently. That is an Alari problem. <laughs> and even Alari would probably have to agree that this is not the place to engage. Oh, I no, think they would understand. Wouldn't she wouldn't want to engage, really. Well, of course, but... you get the point. Regardless, as long as they don't cause problems or go near Umpa. They will not go near Umpa. Because Umpa is not their opponent, is she? The small human seemed fine with our company. Yes, because she thought you were good normal dogs. Right, I want to go back to bed. I have she a big day tomorrow. She is a literal toddler. Who does not understand that you are Blade. And yet we didn't cut her or hurt her. I'm going to bed. Don't fight. Yeah, whatever. So, go to bed. Doesn't head. fight. So I, I will. To <laughs> I'm gonna go and just kind of warn like a few people on the ship not to kind of go to the cargo hold. Is there um, a car hold? We should probably just lock the door behind us. Uh, they'd probably get out. Of course they'd probably get out, but if the intent really would be clear. To, um, if so, they really wanted to, we couldn't stop them from getting out. But I'll tell, I mean, of like, course. Sejuani, I'll tell Sejuani, <laughs> I'll tell Trundle, and I'll tell uh, the alcoholic mother. Because she sometimes goes down there. So you go around telling everyone essentially put don't, on the ship. Don't go in the cargo hold. Not go in the cargo hold. I'm assuming that you're omitting a few people from that. Who? Well, let's face it, if you told Mundo that there was dogs there with Yeah, no, them, I'm not going to tell Mundo. Is there anyone else you're omitting? I don't know. I kind of just said the few people I was telling. Okay. I'm not going to tell everyone, I'm just going to tell a couple of select people, aka the people in charge of their forces that are on our ship. Okay. And our mo and Elar Delris and Alari's mum, because she sometimes goes down there. Okay. And you're, after that, you're heading to sleep. I'm heading to my room. Yep, you head to your room. Smells a bit dog, but not in the way of the Pretty much they didn't try and mark the territory, let's put it that way. Good. Is Umpa still there? Just find a small puddle of mercury on the floor. Huh? Small puddle of blood. It's like, oh. Oh, that's how they do it. Umpa is a little bit pouty still. Um, where's Nico as well? Is she... Nico, she... I would say, has headed onto the deck at this point. Mm -hmm. So I'll kind of go over to Umpa and it's like, Umpa, no playing with the blade puppies. Do we get dog? And you can play with Draken as much as you like. But do we get Draken Rocky? probably. But do we also get probably... Rocky dog? You can play with him. Patu cannot have a lichen rock, okay? <laughs> she is not allowed. She already has a Pokemon. But you can play with him too. And if you really want, I'll get you a dog. Once all this is over. <laughs> spiky dog? But no, you can't have a spiky dog. They're not pets, Umpa. There's a difference between friendly animals that we can have on the ship 
and hive mind blade dogs that want to hunt and kill everything. You're right. Oh, oh, we'll just... The second one sounds like a better pet. Ompa <laughs> will just look to you, uh, Dalris. Mm -hmm. And just simply ask one question. What's a Daikin? I think it's like a living weapon thing. That's when you turn the light off. Like that giant guy <laughs> with the sword. He was a Darkin. Dogs say they Darkin. Maybe. They could be, I guess. They're weird. Also combative. But doesn't matter whether they're darken or not. Won't let them do anything on this ship that they shouldn't. And I need you to promise me that you won't go to near them, okay? She's gonna look to you. Promise, but if you make a promise back. Promise? What do you want me to promise? When you and the Larry split, don't leave. I'll try to keep my promise. I'll try to keep that promise as best I can, Umba. <laughs> the silence for a while. <laughs> well, it's because the entire point of them separating is so that they could live their own lives. And... <laughs> For Delrus, I don't think that means living on this ship forever. <laughs> like, and Alari, I think it might be kind of traveling with the crew for a long time, but I think Delrus would probably want to go out and explore. I guess more it than also anything. depends on how they're going to end up with different bodies. Yeah, it depends how it ends up. Because, mm. like,. One could just be completely gone. Like, you know. But, it's just to say, it's like, I'll try to stay with you as much as possible, Umpa. But, I will say, no matter how far apart we are, we'll always be family, okay? But family leave. Not this family. Ruffleberg left. Kaiper they didn't left. Want to. They didn't want to. Lady left. Not. They didn't want to leave you. But they wanted to save the world as well. A voice enters Umpa's mind. It's the porcelain lady. None of us are gone, dear. We are all always with you, no matter where we are. Oh god, you're the triple two. <clears throat> so, Umpa will like perk up and just look around the room. Mm. Ah! Yeah. Ah! <laughs> They to to my wanted team to. They wanted to save everyone, Umpa. And whether you can see them or hear them or not, they'll always love you. And if they could be with you forever, they would be. Umpa mm. will fall asleep at this point. Just gonna just... Took her. Took her in. <laughs> Before kind of going to rest. Okay. I need you to go to rest. Delaris. Mm. In your dreams, 
you are visited by what seems to be a large bird-like figure <coughs> in the sky. Mm -hmm. And you do indeed find yourself stood next to a lorry. Oh, this is new. Quite. So you are returning back to me, just as the egg is ready to hatch. <laughs> or I just gotta go... Is this another detour we have to take now? Not I don't quite. think the Winter's Claw are going to be happy about it. That indeed is going to be the issue. For if, well, I wasn't going to ask for a detour, I was going to come to you. Mm. But those that you travel with, they could prove to be a danger. They want to come and help us fight Lysandra. We're and that is really indeed a noble cause. But what afterwards? Not... I don't know. We just... You know I've told you we have our own goals in this. Our goals of being ourselves again. Being separate. Everyone has their own goals. Even my brother has his own goals. I have no love lost for the Winter's Claw. Nor the Averroes. <coughs> Neither group helped us. Neither group wanted us. There is always other pathways. We do not ask of you to join any of them you don't want to. That is not the god of what I am. Life and rebirth are my domains. <coughs> Giving you that, that extra chance is just what I'm about. This is what I do. And my brother, on the wish? other hand, wishes for war, wishes for violence, wishes for the old ways. <coughs> he has already chosen his avatar. And what would you wish for me? <laughs> to keep an eye out and make sure that does not come to pass. Because doing so may result in your friend turning on you. Are you saying that it's Alexander he's chosen? Indeed. And how would I stop a god from getting what he wants? You have stopped gods before, and godlike beings. <coughs> Could he just force this upon Alexander? Or does it have to be consensual? He could try. But your friend is also quite strong-willed. He is. And after all we've been through, I think he's tired. It all depends on what time my brother plans to execute this plan. One moment of weakness could be all it takes. I'm not sure how I could even stop him if that's what he chose. And I would not fight Alexander... As much as we've had our differences, he has been indispensable in all of this. He has helped us more times than we could count. There is one way that I could think of to help, mm -hmm. but it may be painful for you. What? Some of my oldest allies that I always had in these wars, in these situations, were the Yetis. It's kind of like her stare just kind of hardens. And while Umpa is indeed the last, her parents' bodies are still preserved. 
I could give you the power to bring them back. But in doing so, it may mean you may need to be prepared to say goodbye to her. I have no idea if that just came over the microphone at all. Yeah, no, no, it did. Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing again. You may you have to be prepared to say goodbye to her. Oh, piss off! <laughs> but yes. She already has them with you two. There's a difference, though, between parents who love you and want to be with you, who bore you into the world, and ones who adopted you. And we love her, and we would do anything for her. But we can't truly... Replace her parents. You say this, and yet, given your your upbringing was yourselves, you know that the family sometimes is the one that raises you, but the one you choose. We didn't even have a chosen family growing up. But you do now. Or would you not call this crew your family? They are our family. We've just lost three of them. Ones that are unfortunately beyond my power. One is stuck in their own cycle of rebirth. One is beyond even the veils of this world. One chose not to be brought back. We may be her family now, but I, she still misses her parents. Then perhaps you should give her the choice of who she wants to be with. That's... That's cruel. Would you rather be with people you've known for... In retrospect, not a very long time. Or your parents, who are dead. She is very young. And that Indeed. is a very difficult choice. She is young, but at the same time, she does deserve a choice in this. And what would you even do with her parents when they're alive? You said they were your allies? Indeed. What if they just end up dead again? I wouldn't be sending them out blindly. I would give them the choice. They can choose to help me again if they want to. If not, they are free to live their new lives. I will give her the choice, but in this, Alexander and his midnight snack. <laughs> <laughs> if Alexander doesn't sleep, Alexander doesn't, sleep, Alexander doesn't have to speak to the volleyball. <laughs> um, on. if I do this. In the end, this, this squabble between you and your brother, it's not my place to be in the middle of it. 
It is no one's place to be in the middle of it. And yet he and brings you... people there anyway. If I do this... You and your siblings need to sort your shit out. Despite because the fact your that... discourse is tearing the Feliord apart. Despite the fact that she clearly is more avian, it feels to me like a bit of a smile to her as you say that. You sound like her sister. Your sister? The seal mother. The one that is constantly been telling us of this and yet, well you need to it's well past time to sort things out between yourselves I have been you trying have... it is the others who have not then try harder he cares the only about the old ways and Orn keeps himself out of it the Feliord is literally being torn apart by the ideals that you all bear. There won't be a Feliord if this is not resolved. Speaking as someone who's lived in it. Speaking as someone who's seen the warring. Who's seen the burned towns and dead left in its wake. This needs to end. Or all will end. You can be as passive as you like. Not like fighting. Oh, rebirth and life and health. In the end, maybe you just need to slap some sense into him. Here we go. She could add a level nine smite to that. Beat his, <laughs> beat it into his skull. That if he does not stop forcing the war, driving it, there will be nothing left to squabble over. I still love it. Yeah, anyway, it's like you could, you a god, you could add a level nine smite to that. He is also a god. He could use legendary resistance on that. Smite isn't a resistance thing. It's just damage. You can't even counter spell it, bitch. Oh. Um, <laughs> He's a god. He can do what he wants. Yeah, and so she. <laughs> this is literally <laughs> if God made an um, made an object that nothing could move, could he move it? Um, it's quite literally the playground argument of, well, I've got this, well, I've got this that prevents that, well, I've got something that goes through that. Yeah, but you didn't take into account this. It's like, just before we get sidetracked. Yeah, yeah, go, go. Sorry. <laughs> and if he doesn't listen, then you stop him. This is... We're reaching a point of no return. I don't think you understand how... Final that is. There are bigger problems to worry about than petty squabbles between gods. Which one is there speaking are... here? This is uh, a lorry. Okay. Uh, Delrys has been very quiet because she doesn't know why she's here. <laughs> Delrys is like, I'm staying out of this. Delrys doesn't, like, have a connection to Anivia, so <laughs> she doesn't know why she's here. Um, but she's it's like, I don't think you understand how final it is. Once it's done, it's done. The Feliord has been at war for so long, it needs to end. There's worse things under the ice that Lysandra is trying to keep locked away. But she's taking people to do that. 
You gods, you powerful beings, must have a better way. You do I am. You are shouting to the choir here. We have been trying to do what we can. Then try harder. Because... This isn't working. Whatever you're doing isn't working, obviously. Perhaps that is less me trying things and that aren't working, but more your kind giving power to people. <clears throat> you are living gods. People look to something to believe in. If you truly did not want people to follow you, do not grant them what you've granted me. Take it away if you must. I don't fucking care anymore. Don't go around going, you have power, you have power, and expect people not to worship you and follow your ideal into battle. <coughs> do not go around interacting with mortal kind and showing them how much more powerful you are and how much more godlike you are and expect them not to believe in you and not to follow you you expect to give this same talk to my brother to get him to stop as well oh i would I care not if he's a god. At <laughs> I... this point, at this point, it's enough. I After everything not... we've been through. I care not if the volley bear is a god. I will kick that polar bear in his snowballs. <laughs> it's like, I care not. After everything we've been through. Fighting creatures of immense power. Going to the Isles of the Undead, a cursed place. Having to fight things from the void, which are currently trapped under the ice, as I've already mentioned. Which that should be the focus, not this entire fucking petty squabble. And <sighs> losing people over and over and over again. And having the people that hurt us get away again and again. After everything we've been through, I no longer care about how much power you have. How much power he has. The fighting needs to stop. And you, as much as you're saying, oh, it's him. Your Avarosans aren't any better. The people who follow you. Hi, welcome to the Domestic Voice channel. <laughs> Sorry. Del Alari's kind of just fed up with shit at this point. D Dion is literally um, spitting God out a new one. Do you know what the funniest part is? What? You sat there going, you're Avarosans and all better and that lot. And yet, and if you're at this point, could legitimately turn around and be like, I'm sorry, bro. Brom is I better. <laughs> I don't care. Brom is the exception that proves the rule. <laughs> like. What about you? What are we talking about? Brom, Brom is the exception that proves the rule. But <laughs> Delrus is done with. Uh, Alari's done with this shit. <laughs> this is not the time for excuses, Anivia. <sighs> No, now is no time at all. Aside from awakenings. Because, uh, yeah. You need to fix this. One way or another. It's not just on you. It's on him. It's on your other brother. 
It's on your sister. It's on all of you. Or there will be nothing left to fight over. There will be nothing left of the Feliord. It will be gone. Everyone here, everyone there will be gone. And it's at this point that you wake up. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna roll my dice. Because I, mm, actually no, I think Alari would just wake up. <laughs> Switched into sleep. Yeah, well, I always roll every morning anyway. Yeah. Um, because in the sleep they can just kind of switch around. Uh, it depends who's like more active, and because of that entire encounter, I think it would be just Alari who wakes up. I'm not even gonna roll for it. You roll that odd rune on me. You wake up as Alari. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we. There is a number for that. <laughs> Because they've got a set DC uh, for the change, um, which is 16. But Alari, still very pissed off about that conversation, will get up and first just walk over to Alexander's quarter and just banged on the door. <laughs> Okay. Da, 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 down the floor, everyone's banging on my fucking door. Um, uh, Alexander. Alexander. After, after a bit, you did manage to get some sleep. Mm. And while it was une uneventful for the most part, you kept having dreams of the tallest peaks of the Freljord and the thunderstorms that rage beyond, drawing closer and closer. You, as a winter cloth, would know this to be a sign of impending war. Alexander <laughs> sleeps restlessly. Yep. Yes. Um, it's banging on the door. Like is, is that all before I get the bish bash bosh? Yep, yep. Just as you're about to be overcome with the thunderstorm, just like. Duff, 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 duff. Alexander, as quick as a, as quick as a, a big old boy be can, axe to door, open, violent ready. Sees Alari, Alaris. You made me say it now. Um, Alari. <laughs> sees Alari is like, what appears to be the problem? And she's just gonna walk past him into the room and close the door. He was like, we have an issue. Is it is it something really? Um, sudden, because I've sort of picked up my axe. Well, it's not something that's happening right now, but it's oh. something that's going to happen to you, to me, to uh, everyone. Uh, 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 slow, slow down here a little bit, Alari. I'm very tired. There's, that's a lot to take in. And Sorry, let me let me put my axe down. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I've not slept well tonight. Um, put, yes, put the axe down. I. Just so, fucking... uh, yeah, looks at the bed and goes um, and goes for a chair instead and just goes, oh dear. Uh, this is not like you, Alari, so I assume that uh, something's got you all riled up. The phoenix, the bird, the Avarosans worship, and Nivea showed up in my dreams last night. Uh, give me a minute. A I, I, feel, I feel like this is yeah, it's the one your god hates. Alexander looks a little uncomfortable at her being bro. Um, right. Well, I have it on good authority that Volibear wants you as his champion. Go with that one. His Alexander avatar. sort of so, sort of takes it in. That uh, that would be, explain some of the dreams I had last night. Nothing. Nothing too out there. Had a couple of dreams about uh, thunderstorms or the Freljordian Mountains. It is an omen taught by our shamans. It means that war is coming. 
Mm. I suspect I am not having it because I, uh, my thoughts are dwelling on my childhood. I suspect I might have been delivered it. He wishes you to become his avatar. And according to um, the bird, if you do, it will mean further death and destruction in our homeland. I... Oh. Um. I know that becoming his avatar would be a great honor for you. It's the one you worship. But... Worship can sometimes be a strong word when it comes to volley there. I wouldn't say... And... Sorry, go on. <laughs> he may try and force it on you if you do not accept. Come after you in your weakest moments. Uh, right. In all I suppose... Honesty, sorry, go on. Go on. I suppose... This is only fair. Anyway, I have followed him for a long time. Dedicated a lot of what I do in his name for the power that I have believed and have quite clearly shown to have been granted from him. I suppose one day he would always have come a-knocking. Picked a hell of a time. But I suppose that after Volibear has always on great shows in combat. And I suppose the fight with the Void was always going to draw his eye. Especially after him granting me some of his finest spirits in battle. That he would call upon it as a favour. But I did not believe it would come so soon, and certainly not for me. His great leader was in that fight. I am surprised that he came to me before he came to Name of Man, who is my boss. Um, uh, Sejuani. Sejuani. Winter's Claw. Um, she has been the leader for so long. She has been, for all intents and purposes, his champion. Are you certain that he really comes for me? That's what Anivia said. Just from the other side of the door, you'll just hear like a muffled thing, but like, my ears are burning and I'm waiting. Who's out there? The door is muffled. I, I, I don't sleep well. As you call it. Yes, uh... Sejuani, we are, we, 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 you, you were brought. I am merely having some poor sleep. It's Do not worry con... about it. It's like, it's a private conversation, please leave. It's hard to make it private when uh, half the ship can hear it, especially when you are mumbling violently in your sleep. I was not aware of me violently mumbling in my not sleep. Not you, her. Not me, okay. I was not aware of her mumbling either. I... And also, I didn't believe we were shouting. Mm, not shouting, but the ship being very quiet. Listen, my... <sighs> What would I even call him? My liege? My chieftain? I don't know. What chieftain, that's I will be. War, uh... Please, l listen, chieftain, I understand that uh, there is not much I can keep from you, but uh, give me some time to, to speak this out with my friend, if you really must know. It is, then, uh... Let me just, uh... Let me just <laughs> give you this a bit of advice. I believe yes. you were going to seek him out anyway, at some point. Maybe right. finding Udia would be of help to you both now. I yes. suppose it would be wise to speak with him. Thank you. Regardless. Oh, and there's uh, some odd little emo rabbity thing out here. Oh, for God's sake. Get her to fuck off on all. I don't need her in, but... Vex, go to your girlfriend and leave us alone. Vex just shouts out, you told, me the you told me the knife dogs would be dangerous. I went down there and they did nothing. Don't stay at knife dogs. Go and pet them for all I care. I tried. Maybe they'd like happened. it. Maybe they'd hate it. I don't care. <laughs> or he just goes, I... Knife dogs. That's another issue for another time. But that's what the bird said. 
And she said it'd probably be in the best interest of everyone if you don't accept. But I'm not going to... I know what it is to you. What this is. I've generally been... Neutral. The other two have buggered off now at this point, haven't they? Like, yeah, you heard the footsteps yeah. go away. Right. I've been generally very neutral when it comes to the gods or factions in the Thaliorb. I'll make one more. I don't care to be involved in the war. But at the same time, I don't want to see my home destroyed by it either. And that's just going to keep happening if they keep fighting the way they are. Alexander is going to look around the room, and she'll do something that he's never really done before. Which uh, isn't something that's like written down anywhere, but I I'd imagine that you could do it if you wish to, which is to simply, at least temporarily, drop his paladin connection. The closest that you can get to really turning off the man in the sky from listening in for a little bit. You'll sort of see Alexander, uh, Alexander's skin sort of begin to uh, almost warm up a little bit. He doesn't, of course, turn human, he's still Freljordian, but it has less of a, a, a white glow to it. And his eyes return to a more normal colour rather than a ver the very bright blue that they often shine. I, I, I do need to ask a question, actually, because of what I did during the night and how I talked to Anivia. Do I still have my cleric levels? <laughs> because, like, I tore into her. Okay. Did she, did she take away my cleric abilities? No. Okay, good. Also, I was just uh, looking it up then. I just had to Google. Fifi can a paladin disconnect from their god. And uh, technically, yes. <laughs> technically, it is a thing. It's uh -huh. they put it under like if a paladin has a crisis of faith, where you abandon the god, but people then theorize, yeah. But if your faith wavers, surely you can just disconnect on a little bit from him. But that's basically what happens. And he goes. <sighs> so, so you see Alexander's skin brighten up a bit. His eyes cease their, their usual opulent glow. And he, and he sort of... As he sort of, like, lets down his magical potency, you, you see a very different Alexander. R rather than the very macho, over-the-top uh, Frel Yordian that you must be so used to seeing at this point. You see a tired, not necessarily old, but just an, an, an exhausted man. Mm -hmm. His 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 lack of energy and his clear like he's clearly fed up. His emotions really seep through a lot better than they ever did before this point. Kind of like even his e even his stature changes. He goes from sort of sitting down, sort of like very upright on this chair. He sort of slouches a bit. He he sort of lets gravity take him a bit more, if you will. He sort of leans back a bit more. He he he, he, he the weight of the world sort of becomes obvious on him. In the twenty or so years I have been in service, in a way, to Volibear, that is perhaps the first time I have ever shot him out, if only for a moment. <sighs> Alari, I am tired. There is only so much I can truly push through. We have saved. I have screamed it, I have shouted it, but I must... Say it to you as calm and with every bit that it means to me, Alari. We have saved the world twice from two very different threats, very different magnitudes of danger. They fight in different ways, they put up different threats. I have learned things that perhaps I was never meant to learn, 
I have gone years believing my wife to be dead, gone, lost. Here she is, fingertip away from me, again. This is the second time. I, I cannot do it a third. I do not believe that becoming the champion of Olibear is really going to allow me to commit to my family, to be honest, Solari. I have saved this world twi twice. I have saved it without ask for thanks. I have saved it with very little in the way of recompense. I have not come back a richer man. I have not come back a wealthier man. I have come back because my wife needs me. And I have drawn on every ounce of strength that Volibear has granted me that entire time, and for that I can never say that I am not grateful. I would love to say that I would follow that man into oblivion. <sighs> a part of me would say that I believe I genuinely owe him everything. But he will not take this. My final reward for everything I have given. For every friend I have watched die. For every single person who has perished on our journey to deal with these world-devastating effects. To simply be his at the final hurdle. I have seen much too much of this world that I want to see more of. And with every day there seems to be the threat of another world ending event around the corner. And I know that if I take Volibear's championship, I will not be there to stop it the next time. I will be busy cleaving for other members of the Freljord. Other members of the Freljord that came to help us in our time of For a group that I have never felt any real strong connection to. I am not going to pretend I am not conflicted, Alari. As I said, this man has given me all of the strength I required to perform all of these tasks. That includes finding where my wife is. It includes the first time we took ourselves to Lysandra. It includes taking on the Void. The one final step between the possibility of ending this conflict with Lysandra in any sort of peaceful matter. I know what Volibear is like. He is a forceful man. He will not like that I am not ecstatic about my ability to become his next moving weapon. I understand that. He will try to force you. I know he will. I know that there's every possibility he might succeed. I am not the man who set off on this trip. I may have become more proficient with my magical powers, and I may have gained a few scars that have thickened my skin along the way. But that cannot make up for the tired, broken man who has come back from what is essentially two world wars. My mind is tired. I am tired. I do not want to fight him. Well, it was essentially uh, two world wars and one world cup. Do that. I mean, <laughs> at this point, I think we all want peace. Just kind of like slumps down against the door. Is like, I have only known a frail you had I was born into it. I was raised by it. I am not going to pretend I haven't cut down my fair share of the enemy. Sometimes to prove my loyalty to the men around me, sometimes because the enemy left me no choice. I have taken no pride in it. I have taken pride in my combat prowess, let us not get that wrong. I do not want to go back to that. I have fought things that many people of the Freljord did not know existed, could not have pretended to know existed. I... I grew up around the conflict as well. I refused to fight. Not that they wanted us anyway. They did... Delris tried to join them. She tried to join their number, but I stopped her. 
They never cared for us. Neither faction, no one. George helped us occasionally, but it was more out of pity at the time than actual care. We've been fighting too. Everyone on the ship has. That's what I meant. We all. I think now. After everything we've all been through together. No one. Not one of us wants to go back into another world ending situation. We just want to live for what we've been fighting for. You're not alone. If I know it's for you. If he comes for you, I'll burn that bear to ashes. I know it seems like a strange time to bring him up again. But I want to bring up Waffle Dog. Waffle Dog is the man. There have been many members of the crew. Of course there have. But Waffle Dog is the man that I've really grown aside with as we've taken travel. He is the one that I have watched and felt the pain of. I have seen every single part of his story play out. He might have been a chaotic man, but it was born of a place of great pain. From the pains of gods and godhood. He helped me I do not wish to see more. I have seen enough pain in that man than I would see in the pain of a thousand people. If it is one thing, and I am sure Waffleberg would either fully understand or be completely confused by it, but if there is one thing I would want to do by Waffleberg, it is not bear a world where more people lose their family. Yes. He is the man who taught me what pain is. Real pain. I watched him. I saw how it anguished him. <laughs> he chose not to come back from that mech for a lot of reasons. And so, a lot of me wants to do it for him. I want for all the others we lost. I want to help stop what's going on in the Thalioid, but I don't know how. There's only one on. way. I'm going on for generations at this point. It's a long war. That has no end in sight. And I'm pretty sure, I'm very surprised that I still have some of my magic, considering how I screamed at the bird last night. But, I suspect uh, that the bear, or the bear, whatever, <laughs> I suspect that the bird wants the same thing that we want. I understand that godhood is a difficult thing, and fighting the family is harder. You would understand that, with all due respect. I know your mother did not treat you well, but you have gone out of your way to fix this relationship of yours with her. Mm. I cannot imagine it is easy to truly force her, her brother, my god, to change his ways. It will never be easy. No. I don't expect no. it to be. But sometimes, I get the feeling that, despite being a god, that your god respects your opinion greatly. You are really the only voice she had at the time of her need. I would hope that the reason you still have your powers is because she believes the same way you She's asked me to... Uh... She's asked me to either stop you, or stop him somehow from taking over you, or bring Umpa's parents back from the dead. Um, uh, I, I was going to say, but I have to, I, I don't understand the correlation. Stop me or bring back the Yetis, I'm a little... The Yetis were her allies. I see. So she'd essentially be bringing them back to ask them to fight him again. Oh dear. Stop well, him. That solves nothing, doesn't it? 
I'm not sure. I have not had the relationship with Umpa that you have had. But I could not look her in the eyes knowing that I brought her parents back to the warrior. She wanted me to give Umpa the option. To give her the choice. That is not an easy thing to ask him. She's a toddler. He, yes, she, she is. She barely understands death as a concept. And she's been exposed to it much more than someone her age should be. Listen, right, it's, it's, it's been a little while now. People are going to start waking up soon, so we shouldn't converse too much longer. But there is one more thing I want to tell you. In confidence, Alari. Mm. Before we uh, open the door and brave what comes. I will be honest with you. I'm not sure what's going to go down once we get to Lysandra's castle. I have, of course, asked the trolls for their assistance. Well, the troll king in his assistance, simply being escorted to Lysandra, because at the end of the day, I want to resolve it, Khan. Not only because Lysandra is more, she might not be the best person in the world, far from it, but she is another member of the Freljord, and to fight her would be completely salt in the face of everything else I just said. But I want Lysandra to come to the right conclusion from her own action. It could be a power for good. If she understands the power of the Freljordians when they get together to defeat these void creatures, I would hope she could see more power, not freezing as an ice. However, if all things go wrong, I have no intent of performing any sort of full frontal assault. I intended to use this. He will bring out the final whopper. A threat of pure obliteration. We and my wife leave that room where no one did. It is not my way. I understand it is not my way. But I am tired. And it is time for this to end. I do not think I can beat Lysandra in a straight-up assault. It is... callous, a little uncaring of me, that I was so willing to destroy everything as a bargaining chip of Lysandra. But I can't fight her. Not anymore. I cannot fight again so soon after so many Major conflict after major conflict. I... I want to believe my Sandra will listen. I understand why she's doing what she's doing. It's just not a way. A sustainable way. What will she do when she is out of Feliordi? Does she move on even, to the next country? It's not even all Feliordians. It's only those of us who were born as Iceborn. Oh, yeah. Only ice, only Iceborns will satisfy the Walkers' hunger. But she will run out. And when she does, Their dreams, which is then it will all be over anyway, if that is what she believes. That she buys one. time by stealing thing. lives away. That is one thing I had a shout at Anivia at, actually. The, instead of, you know, um, fighting amongst themselves, they should be dealing with the threat under the ice. It is not like Volibear has been much different. He has been rather no. passive, dealing with smaller threats that bring more glory because they're easier to win, rather than All dealing with them. the major threats. All of them have. They haven't. They haven't done anything. Well, there is only one thing we can do with that alarm. He'll he'll stand up. He still hasn't um, returned his power to himself. 
And it's, 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 he, again, even more so than when he sat down, Alexander has a more natural human feel about him. He He's just obviously not the man he is when fully powered when, well, he lets his guard down, essentially. All we can do is take a deep breath in and face what comes next. We cannot truly understand the machinations of the gods until they are displayed in front of us. Then we shall tackle it one at a time, together. Yes, I did want to ask you though. I feel like giving Umpa that choice is cruel. She doesn't understand properly, but also, if I don't tell her, then I'm keeping things from her. And I don't know what to do with that. I never really had parents growing up, so I don't know what the right choice here is. My parents, uh, did not live to see my 16th birthday. I can't say that I particularly understand. My drunken mother less when I was seven. And we both understand. At least to a differing extent, I imagine, but we both understand. It can be difficult. I am not sure if I would have changed things, though. My father was a bit of a warmonger. He was not kind to his enemy. But, uh, rather, um, macabre about it as well. Mm. My mother... I know she is dead, because I have looked into it. She left when I was young. She had no interest in bringing me up. It is a lot of pain I've had to put behind myself. I, I do not know. Uh, yet he's a, they are a bit before my time in a way. I could not say really how it would work for young Umpa. I am not the right person to ask. It is a difficult situation. If you do not ask her, then... She will be truly hurt if she ever discovers the truth. If you do tell her, she may find herself forever regretting taking the wrong option, whatever she decides. If her parents prove to be unreliable for whatever, seeing as they are looked to be brought upon as soldiers, or the harsh reality of losing the chance to meet your real parents, if she was ever to discover it later on. I cannot answer that one for you, Alari. The sun is coming through. It is time to go. Alexander will do something once more that he's never really done before. And, and extend a gentle, friendly hand to Alari. Yeah, she'll grab your hand and, like, hold up. Sort of a give, like... gives a bit of a squeeze and like, oh. He will restore his paladin powers. He will plant thoughts in his head of, um, and perhaps uh, he sort of plants some thoughts in his head about entering some sort of meditative stance on the dreams he was having last night, sort of uh, taking over, in case any uh, gods come up Ryan. And he will open the door. And beat the shit out of Vex if she's there. Um... Okay, so... Well, I have not had anything to say in 20 minutes. <laughs> you, have discovered, you, you have discovered the power of Jack when he has a, a character moment. Um, I could talk forever. Um, I have discovered the power of... I could sit back and have a nausea at other stuff while this happens. And then totally be like, oh, wait, was that a thing that got brought up in conversation? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Go on. So, so we're... we're, we're, we're... 
everyone's probably waking up at this point. We've been talking for quite oh, yeah. a while, so out has, we pop. Has this been happening? You've been hearing like a lot more commotion happening outside, like people passing by. No one really stopping too much. Oh, crack open door. Has anyone been a, a peeping Tom? Uh, there is someone stood there. Go on. Give me a second. Try to finish off a chunk of Cadbury Stirring Milk. It's important because it dictates if I beat the shit out of it. Um, kidding, but go on. Give me a I need to find a picture. Because. Oh, it's someone well, new. I've seen that. this person before. You've not seen them in a while and they weren't there in the battle or on the ship. As oh, okay. God damn it, I typed in the name, it gave me every version of that name, but, you know, the one I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh yes, try and find the uh, image for that champion. Oh, did you mean uh, Spider-Man? No. Did you mean a Ben 10? No. What? Anyway. Uh, in the Indeed chat, you will see this person stood outside the door. Start. Ah, breath of the weed. Um. Oh, Gwen. She just be stood there with a smile. Just, just looked up and out and just. Who the fuck are just you? Like... Gwen. <laughs> Greetings, friends. You're the, you're the last person I expected to see today. I had someone I needed. Well, I had something I needed to hand over. What? Open up your hands first. Just don't hold out a hand. She's going to plop Pinko in your hand. Oh dear God. Um. Right. Where did? It's back. If you want, we could put it down in the uh, cargo bay. So, um, it's, uh, just kind of staring at Pinko this entire time, like, uh. Pinko's just staring back with his glorious different colored eyes. <laughs> it's kind there of is, like. There is, this is a blank expression. There is no intention behind this stare. <laughs> All jokes aside, I'm surprised. You have quite a menagerie on the ship. I'm surprised you're not adding it to it. Not this one. Um, right. <laughs> I'm gonna go check in with Pitu. See how close we are to our destiny. The anticipation is going to kill me. Really, literally. I'm pretty sure at this point. My heart might stop. I'm rolling a perception on that. Okay. I'll just... just from the bowels of the ship, you just hear, like, a duff, 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 go forward with just the voice in the distance be like, So what, heart stop? Mundo fix. Just turn over Pinko and just plop him on the floor. <laughs> I thought you could be just turn over Pinko and yeet. Alexander's just gonna keep walking because um, Mondo becomes will a, probably have a stroke and lose who the fuck has, has a heart attack. Um, becomes a, a goalie with a ball. I like to imagine <gasps> Mondo is like a Metal Gear Solid enemy. He gets upstairs, sees no one um, that, that has my voice, and you just see the little question mark appear up there. No, he just gets up there, given you, you're just up there, but given you're not saying anything else about a heart attack, he just stares at you for a second and it's like, Hmm, must have been Mundo Imagination. <laughs> Walks back down to his pathing. He is a threat to society. Anyway. Um, yes. That's a good job. Oh. He's a charming threat to society. Um, so, how close are we to our fucking destination? So, uh, as you head up towards the deck, uh, were you following Dallas, uh, Larry? 
Yeah, I'll head up to the deck as well. Is Pinko following Galari? Yes. So, so she'll just hear tiny little clamorings behind her. <laughs> what is Alari's thoughts to this? Alari's thoughts are just, oh gosh, it's back. <laughs> imagine, imagine a Chihuahua with unclipped toenails scampering across the floor. That is pretty much what Alari is hearing behind her. <laughs> the threat is. And if she <laughs> stops. It stops. <laughs> the threat is approaching a Mach 1 and cannot stop. <laughs> so, how close are we to the Fortress of Solitude? Given that Patu has been flying all night, and you are going at quite a decent speed, you'd be roughly over the water by now, and you do see looming in the distance the tall mountains. But Patu will look to him and be like, are we dropping off some of the people first or dropping them off afterwards? Just uh, drop off any of the... Uh... You might as well drop people off. I'm not exactly yeah, dragging set, them into another fight. Set them down. Okay, so the ship will be set down at this point. Those that aren't from the Freljord will be departing to head back to Noxus or wherever they need to. Aside from Mundo, who is loaded into the cannon and fired back to Zod. <laughs> Fair enough. Mundo wanted to take the Waffleberg way. <laughs> right. So, we would drop off a bunch of people. Yep. And then the ship I, I, I'm, I'm really ready to get to the next bit, so forgive me if I'm very much like, get them off, get them off. <laughs> um, it's... It's not that kind of campaign, Jack. We're sorry. <laughs> anyway. Sorry. Wait, wait, wait. I said that wrong. We're sorry. But uh, yes, they will depart the ship. The ship will take back off. And you'll carry on your way towards the Freljord. With just the Brintus Claw. Trundle. And the Fury's pack, as well as the usual suspects, I guess, with a... Alright. Asterix. And I guess Gwen as well now, given Gwen he's having to keep an eye out to make sure if Pinko don't do shit. Are we, uh... Is it alright if we get to the part where the castle starts? <laughs> um... So yes. I said, but you wanted me to fast track. Yes! Uh, I'm so ready for that. I know, I, I'm so sorry, Jack, but I need to have a conversation with Umper. Oh yeah, yeah, go have the conversation with Umper, of course, but... <laughs> I've talked to so many NPCs over two weeks, I'm ready. Um, I'm so ready. While everybody's getting ready and she's having a conversation, Pinko's just going to go up to the top, like the crow's nest, and just sit there and enjoy the wind in his fur. Okay. Okay. So. We've got to find Umpa. Yeah. Sorry, it's Kay. Um, as you're wandering through to find Umpa, Mm -hmm. We find her sat on top of one of the blade dogs. Yeah. I'm not. Alari's just staring at the blade dogs like, oh, oh, I don't like that. Make me a perception. Oh. I'm not the perception. Oh my god. You easily see the flower on the dog's head. Oh! Ah. Nico! That's kind of precious. Don't worry me about like that. Nick cannot try to make a Larry worry, just trying to keep Umpa in spirit high. Fair enough. Um, we, uh, this is going to be a difficult thing. Can we go somewhere private um, with Umpa to chat? Do you mean Royal we or are we as in Inglitnico? Do you want to come? Is it's it... going to be a pretty heavy conversation. Is it something private that uh, Larry just wants to do a solo? It's not private per se. In fact, your input might actually be valued. 
Interestingly, while you're there, Umpa is just staring at you. Just with kind of like, I wouldn't say angry eyes, but kind of like concern. Just kind of go and scoop her up. It's like, it's all right. She kind of actually flinched slightly at the touch. Hmm? You want to send Umpa away? No, no, yeah, I don't. I'll be, that was going to say, I'll be back in a minute, my, my dudes. All right. I'll never, I never want to send, I'll never want to send you away, Umpa. Ever. You want Umpa to go back to Perrin. What? I don't, I don't want that. I must have really been talking loudly last night. But she, both her and Nico not. Look, let's go have a conversation about this, okay? Mumpa stay here with family. That's all that need to do. It's a bit more complicated. We would never make you leave if you didn't want to. But it has to be your choice. A permit choice. But, like I said, it's it's more complicated. Because it's not just whether you are, you leave or not. It's whether your parents live again. Umpa does like the slow blink and then like you're planning on dying anytime soon? No, I mean your birth parents, Umpa. Birth parents, uh Umpa not remember too well. You're Umpa yet too to be little parents. for that. What Umpa know is, Umpa stay here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Silence. I just... It's the... thing that is... What she told me is the options. I know you choose to stay with us, and that's completely fine. Yeah. And we'll always love you, and we'll have you, no matter what. You'll always be... You'll always be ours, okay? No and one's going to send you away. And that's all that need to be said. Oh, Alright. And she'll just kind of pick her up yeah. and like... Umpa? Would be fine with other parents coming back. Could always go see them, but... Umpa home on the ship. Just mean that Umpa have two families then. <laughs> yeah. No matter what, I'll always love you, okay? We know. Good. And you'll hear a bit of a sniffling. Hmm? Are you looking to the direction? Yeah. You see a mother just off in the corner. Just having like peeked around the corner and seen this. Mm. Sorry for that. breaking up such a scene there. Well. I guess you're 
part of the family too, so. I mean, I don't feel like I've earned that place back yet, but I'm trying at least. Well, a way to start is by being a good grandmother. I'll put a little tilt her head to you, but like, she happened. She mm. have to look after Rumpa while you're off on an adventure. I thought that was Thingy. What, uh, Nico? Stilara. Oh, Stilara. Yes, but if you do recall right, at some point Stilara went back with Kaipa. Yeah. But then Nico was on the ship as well, so yeah. I don't think she'd ever just assume that her mother was... Oh, yeah, no, it wasn't again. always just purely the mother, but she did help. Well, she has to be a better one. For everything that's happened. She getting there. Which means spoil this kid rotten. Don't let her do dangerous stuff, but spoil her rotten. She'll just look you like, mother will look to you and be like, on one hand, hey, I've been trying to do all that. On the other hand, you do realize you correctly she has a club with a spike sticking through it. Yes, but I mean, on like one hand, don't let her play with spike dogs. On the other hand, like, she has a club and there's nothing we can really do about that. She's very attached to it. And it's magical, so. To be fair, your sister would say. Yeah. Regardless. I... I am very... Concerned about what's uh, going to happen when we go there today. So let's all try to stay in one piece. I mean, if you need to, we can. I can stay on board here and keep an eye out under this one. Yes, that. But it's also just going to be a thing of today. This is going to be dangerous. Very dangerous. Oh yeah, well, it's... Why some of us are choosing to stay on board the ship to... Make sure no one tries to get on board while you're all out doing this... Mm -hmm. ...situation. <sighs> oh, that's cursed. Sorry, I just saw something there and it was cursed. Hmm. So is there anything else that you're wanting to say or do? He'll probably just spend some time with Umpa then. Okay. Is there anything that any of y'all are wanting to do before we reach the destination? I want to reach the destination. No, none of it. I guess is Pinko doing anything during this? No, it's just a chilling. Okay. So I, I, I am going to state that it takes a couple more days. You do finally make it into the fairly old. And yeah, again, quite cold. Pretty much snow piling on top of the ship as you try to shovel it off. You do have the option of parking up where you parked up last time and making the trek on foot. 
or nope. just try to land your ship close as can? We have the, um, with, with, with the trolling on board, landing nearby, it shouldn't be an issue. That's fair. Yeah. So, it will be just like one or two more days before you do see the Citadel getting closer and closer. And Trunda will point out an area for Patu to land. As your ship descends, down below you see waiting a large group of trolls and Jesus Christ, uh, Frostguard, that's their name, just waiting. Don't really seem to be like getting ready for aggressive stances so to attack, more like an escort. So, this is it. This is a year in the making. <laughs> you ready for anything, my friend? Ready for anything. Trundle, you may uh, do the honours of uh, kicking down the gangplank, basically. <laughs> and as you do so, that is where we're ending for this week. That's that. I mean, it is coming up to two hours. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> so, two for a hours. moment there, I thought I heard Jack so the soul die a little. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was cautious with saying the thing of this is where we ended it for this week, so they're going. <laughs> yes, it does mean way to good. I'm completely stealing the next session. I'm not complaining. Oh. It also means that hopefully Santa and Rana will be able to be here for it, and also maybe Rebecca. But uh, yes, I hope you all enjoyed today's session, including those watching. Thank you all so much, and. If you want to see more of us, here comes the meme. If you want to see more of us, check out Sirens Through the Fog and Star Plunder over on Spotify, as well as Echoes of the Past over on Chocobo Keeper's channel. Over here, you've also got The Devil Darling Season 2, as well as what probably will be popping up sometime next week from this upload. We are hoping to start a recording session of Baldur's Gate 3. So look forward to that. And we will see you all next time on the Dark Tides of Runeterra. Bye. Bye.